Hey guys girls, I'm James and welcome to the channel. Today we're not taking a look at another Holy Stone drone, we're taking a look at the Holy Stone drone. Why do I say that? Uh, Holy Stone's newest release, the HS720G, is gonna by far be their new flagship. The 720E has really been their flagship drone for the last few years and it's got a lot of good features, but I've had a, a love-hate relationship with it. I've always said Holy Stone makes the best beginner mini drone in the HS210, which is a very important drone to learn on so you can learn the orientation of a drone and man, when you go from the 80 to 150 dollar range, I think I have over 20 Holy Stone drone reviews I've done. Almost all of them are in that range. Just like I did with my first Holy Stone drone, I got the 700 and it was a good drone to learn on, very inexpensive. But then after a few years, when I had this one, man, they came out with my favorite Holy Stone drone, which is the HS700E. Uh, even though they look just alike, man, this one outperforms it so much. Drones are like dog years. Two or three years later, I mean, this thing flies so much better. Better camera, better connectivity, uh, no latency like this one had. All around, I really enjoy flying this drone for the $300 range. So just as they imp improved the 700E over the 700, now they've really improved the 720G over the 720E. So the 720E, the E stood for image stabilization for the camera because it was a one axis gimbal. So it would go up and down. But this one is just like the 360 and 600. It's got a multiple axis gimbal. So instead of just going up and down, and when you're flying it, when the camera rolls to the left and to the right, the camera stays still so the horizon doesn't move in your shot. So it gives much better videos. It doesn't have the third axis, which is a pan, which the camera can turn to the right and left. But most people that even have that don't even know how to use that on a drone. So at least they have that one. Also, that's one more thing that could break. So it's great that they went to multiple axis gimbal, but let me tell you the best thing about this drone. They went on a major diet. This one weighs 477 grams. This one's 360. So it's lost over 25% of its weight. I mean, look at the motors on this thing. They're tiny. So you may be thinking, James, I mean, this one's gonna be a lot slower. No, even though look at the battery size difference on these two. Even though the battery is way smaller with the new technology of batteries, this one's more powerful and it has a longer flight time also comes with the same remote, but there's only one thing missing, light switch. So this one doesn't have the lights. So you gotta, there's some compromises you gotta have. How important are the lights when you really wanna save weight? How often are you flying your drone at, at night? Where the weight savings on this one make this one is sporty flyer, just like the 510. And now this one's more powerful, 25% lighter, and it turns on a dime with no latency and it's way faster. So yesterday, me and my son took them out and uh, we flew them both outside in the wind. It was 25 mile an hour winds. Uh, the 720E just struggled to hold its position. Sometimes it was even going backwards. And you'll see in the video, this one ripped into the wind. The only problem I had on the way back, we were using the speed gun to, to get the speed on it. And it was, it was even faster than the 720E, but I've been flying my FPV drone for the last few months and I haven't been flying camera drones a lot. A lot. And flying line of sight sometimes is harder. I clipped a tree with it. I can't believe I did that. I haven't clipped a tree in years. It fell 25 feet into my driveway, flipped over, hit my rock retaining wall, and flipped into the creek. And I'm like, oh, I haven't done all the testing on it yet. I need to do the return to home. How far will it fly? How... There's so many things I wanted to do with it. And I'm thinking, I've ruined it. They're going to have to send me another one. You know what? Look at this. It did fantastic. It's got a, a couple few scratches on it, and I'm not telling you to crash yours to test it. I tested it for you. It crashed really well. And I know that because on this other one, here's my other 720 uh, E. I clipped, I clipped a tree on it. It barely fell and it broke this arm off. So this one seems to be much more durable. I'll show you when we're going over the app how it's much more vented and everything also. So today we've got 35 mile an hour winds. So I'm gonna make another video in a couple days when the winds die down and I'll do the circle me, the follow me, how far will it go until it loses connection, does the return to homework. So this is part one, just a review of the drone and I'll show you some footage from yesterday, the, the embarrassing crash. And then we'll go and I'll go over the features of the drone and it's got a new app. That's real important too. Uh, I know the Filio Go sometimes it kept crashing so now there's a new app with this drone. So let me quit talking about it. Let me show you the footage and I'll show you how the app works, all the features of the drone, and then I'll come out with a part two and I'll fly it some more and go over all the, the flight features of it. So let's go put her up in the air. What's up guys? Welcome to Before You Go. Today we're gonna be comparing the Holy Stone 720E and 720G for flight times and speed test.
Let me start out by saying I can't believe how fast this thing goes into a 25 mile an hour wind. Uh, the 720E would only hold its position and even fly backwards, but with the lighter weight, the stronger battery, stronger motors, it was doing really good. But you got to be responsible when you're flying a drone, no matter how many years you've been doing it and how good you are. I wasn't paying attention and I clipped that tree coming back across. Okay, so it's three miles an hour fast. Oh! <laughs> there it goes. So anytime you switch back between FPV and camera drones, you need to reevaluate how you're flying. I wasn't being very sensible here, and I haven't wrecked a drone in over a year. I was in shock when I went down and found out that it was really okay. Yeah. Holy cow! It's okay. <laughs> what? Did you see that? Yeah, it slammed on the concrete. No way. <laughs> That was me being stupid. <laughs> oh. oh, no way. <laughs> so we put her back in the air and she did just great. So to keep this video from being an hour long, like I said, I'm gonna make a part two. I'm gonna go over all the aspects of how the drone flies. The return to home, how far will it go, uh, the circle, the follow me, um, how good the camera works. The camera works really good. The color saturation on it's really good. Here, if you look at the bushes behind here, you can see how hard that wind's blowing. It's blowing like 20 something miles an hour and you can see the camera tilted because the drone's trying to fight the wind, but it's doing really good. The app seems to be a lot better than the Affiliate Go app. It seems uh, much more user friendly. Here it blew my hat off. My goodness, it's windy. So here me and my son, we're trying to go over and fly both the drones at the same time and comparing them, but I don't want this to make to be a comparison video between the 720e and the g but um, just let it stand alone on its own i'll compare those in a different video later and i'll especially put it up against the 700e which is my favorite holy stone drone but maybe not now i mean this drone's it's pretty awesome so up next i am going to do a deep dive into the app and all those aspects of the drone so if you bought this drone and you're watching this be sure and watch all of it and make your pre-start checklist off the things that i go over um, so let's go inside and let's go over everything. All right, guys, let's see what she weighs in at. 360 grams, which compared to 476 for the 720E. And the 700E, it's about the same. 370, you know, which is still less than half as much as, say, a Maverick 3, which is at 876. And, and of course, the, the mini-me of it comes in at 167. So I thought the 440 looked like the 720 before, but now the 440 even looks more like the mini me of the 720G. I mean, these things are look, look almost identical. So how much is 366 grams? Well, 366 grams is the weight of a wonderful can of chicken of the sea tuna fish and a chicken of the sea sardines. Which one's your favorite? I know which one mine is. So on the drone, there are some changes. Of course, the most noticeable is the two axis gimbal. It doesn't have that third axis, so it doesn't pan to the left and right, but it does go up and down in turns. But really, you hardly ever use the pan axis. Uh, most people don't even know how to activate it on their drone. So going up and down, and this really stabilizes the footage. So this one now has vents. There's vents up here that vent in and then vent out back here. So on the bottom, gone are the lights uh, that they had on the 720. It still has the optical flow sensor, but the lights are gone. And it has two optical flow sensors versus one for the 720. One thing that was a big complaint on the 720E is trying to hook these batteries up in here. And it was a pain and they would fall out while you're trying to charge them. Well, gone are these chargers. And what's great about this drone now is it has intelligent batteries. So all you do is you plug your C into the bottom and these lights light up it and, and let you know when it's charged. So you hold down on it and what's, to turn the drone on and off. And this is how you turn it on. And then you press down to hold it off. So if this battery's on and you pop it in, it'll still turn the drone on. So you're swapping batteries. But what's nice when it's flying, you can look back here you can also look at the app, but back here, it'll show you how far the battery's going. It's got a really nice light in the back. So how you charge a battery is just with the C connector on the bottom and it does come with the cable. 
and it takes about an hour to charge and you get about 20 to 5 to 28 minutes of flight time. So let's look at these motors. These motors are significantly smaller. They're a little bit taller, but they're way less wider. But, but this, the 720G is faster, better life, even with the smaller motors. So here, your SD card goes in here. You change the props the same way with the two little screws on here. And these props are labeled A and Bs. So be sure when you're changing the props, you put the right ones on because the angle of attack is different and it won't fly if you, if you get that wrong. Be sure when you're packing it in the carrying case that you put it into the, you put the gimbal guard on. My son has broken two drones before by sticking the drone into the, into the case without this on there. Not flying it, he broke it. He broke it sticking it into the case without the gimbal guard on. I thought the case was nice on the old 720. This one has more, much more of a pleather feel to it. <laughs> and it's got a, a nice handle on the top instead of being on the side. Holy Stone really does a good job with these cases. It's the same remote, but the only difference is the switch is gone because there isn't for the lights. It comes with the extra props. So to pull the battery out, it's got this little button that pops. If you know you're gonna store your drone for a long time, put this back on there. It's best that these aren't connected in here for if you're gonna be storing it for a long time. So the, bat the lights are on the back of the 720 back here, and now they're on the battery right here. And of course, this is how you turn it on just kind of like you do the Maverick 3. Well, the power switch is on the battery where the power switch on the 720 was on the top. So on the remote, it takes two double A's that go in the back and these fold down so you can hold it better. Your phone, just like the other remote, it's the same. Your phone goes in here. We pull it up all the way. This little flap will come down. You can put your phone in there. Also, every time you turn it on, it's best to hold down on this when you, when you turn it over. This is, and this is to start and stop the motors. And if it seems to be flying away from you or you're, or you're out of control, you just press down on this and it, it's emergency stop also, and it will stop the props from spinning and it'll fall out of the sky. So I'm gonna fly it with my phone, but I'm gonna show you how to use the app with my iPad. So you go to page 19 and you find your QR code. You open up your camera. And it's the first time I've seen this app. It's the Ophelio Fly app. Not the, the other one was the Ophelio Go. You download the app and then you can open it. So to get it to work, you turn the drone on. You return the motor, you turn the remote on. I just make it a habit of holding this down every time. Wow, it connected quick. So you can tell it's connected because the, it shows you the batteries. The, the GPS is on, but we don't have any satellites right now. And it shows that we're in speed two. You see that blinked on and off? That was for the calibration. I'll, we'll go over that in a second. And on the remote, this is your take on and off button, but this starts and stops the motors. A short press takes a photo and a long press takes a video. This little dial here doesn't do anything, but this dial uh, moves the gimbal up and down. So it's a Wi-Fi drone. So before you do anything, Part of your pre-start checklist, you need to get out of the app, go back to your Wi-Fi, look for Holy Stone, pull up Holy Stone. Now it's connected to the app. We know the remote is connected to the drone, but now we need to connect the app to get the camera to work. So when we go back to the app, and now the camera will be working. It takes a second. And now the camera works. And see, even if I, even if I tilt the drone, it stays, see it takes a minute when you go straight into the sunlight, but it adjusts to the color. The color is really good on it. So it says weak GPS signal because we are not in there. This is follow me, points of interest, and headless mode. Don't ever use headless mode. Uh, follow me, the drone will follow you, and points of interest is my favorite thing. Uh, follow me can be, kind of scary because if it's following you it does not have an obstacle avoidance so you need to really pay attention when it's following you point of interest is neat because it you can make it circle around you uh, return to home here and take off here also but you can also do that on the remote um, over here is your gallery you can get a free battery if you fill that out it says here's where you switch between photos and videos and here's your camera adjustments so you can set your uh, brightness color saturation your uh, ISO, I'd leave it on auto. Uh, you, your white, your uh, your white balance, 
your video size if you want to shoot in 1080. 4K takes a lot more, but the, if you look at 1080 is in 60 frames per second. You can clear your catch. So you can do the, the gimbal gyro calibration here. So when you hit calibrate, you'll see that it calibrates itself. Best to have it on a flat surface. And then the roll adjustment. And you can set how much you want it to roll. Here, of course, we don't have any satellites. It shows you the batteries, the remote signal. If you can, you can actually use VR glasses with this if you want to. But up here under settings, use metric or British. There's the, this is real important here, this beginner mode. If you have beginner mode turned on, it's not gonna go very far and it's not gonna go very fast and it won't turn. So if you turn beginner mode on, you don't have any, it's not gonna go more than 50 feet from you. But here's where you set your orbital diameter. This is for the, when it circles around you. Maximum distance. So we have it at 1,640 feet. That's about a mile. Maximum height. See, so you can't even set your height higher than 400 feet. That's where it needs to be. Um, return to home is very important. So right now it's set on 49. If there's any trees higher than you than 49, oop, it's beeping at me because we're not doing anything. <laughs> Let's start the motors. Let's start the motors, it'll quit beeping at you by pushing this button. And hold back down on it, and it'll turn off. All right, um, it just, it'll overheat if it's just sitting there. So this return to home is real important. If there's trees around you higher than 49 feet, it'll smash into them. If you wanna set that higher than any, any one around you, you can start your calibration here, or you can start your calibration on the remote by pulling down it into the left on both of them. So let's do, let's do a calibration. You wanna do this every time, it'll, it'll prompt you up here, there'll be a little, a little satellite that shows that it wants to be a compass calibration. What compass calibration is, if you get in your car and you turn your GPS on, until you start driving, those satellites don't know which way your, your car is pointed. So it's real important uh, that the satellites know which direction this drone's going. And so when you hit start, what you're gonna do, like almost all drones, you even have to do these on the expensive drones, you spin it three times, now see, it, it tells me to hold, put it up and spin it three times this way. Oh, that, that gimbal is getting hot. And now, the comp now it's calibrated. So now the satellites know which direction it's pointed and vertically it knows which is the top and which is the bottom. So anytime you crash it hard or you go somewhere, it'll, it'll notify you. But if you crash it, even if it doesn't tell you to, to recalibrate it, you wanna recalibrate the compass. So if you make a pre-start checklist, the first thing you wanna do, make sure you're connected to the Wi-Fi, um, make sure the remote's working on the phone, and then make sure you calibrate your compass every time. I hear about so many flyaways, but if it starts toilet bowling on you or something like that, then there's something wrong with the compass calibration. Also on the app, it'll show you your distance and your height and how fast you're going, but it also tells you right here on the remote, the distance and the height. All right, let's come back for our final review. Hey guys, so thanks so much for watching my review of the 720G. Although I've done over 20 Holy Stone reviews and they send me the drones, they don't pay me. So these reviews are my honest feelings about it. I've even told you about some of the Holy Stone drones that I told you not to buy, and that there's other better drones out there. But this one, and this one flies good. It just came out today, so here's, like I didn't say earlier, here's the price on it. And I didn't know this price until just now. And usually they'll send, when they release something, they'll send me a discount code. So in two more days, I'll post the video with all the flight things. See you in a couple days with part two. Thanks for watching.